Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a few more tips and tricks, only this time they're more SIPTA related, although some of them can be used on Exiled Lands as well. Now, I must admit I have not played nearly as much SIPTA as I have Exiled Lands, but in my 500 or so hours here I've learned a few things. This is by no means a conclusive list, but just a few things that I do find helpful when I am doing playthroughs on SIPTA. One of our first stops is the Wreck of the Seagull. And this is a bit of a three for one, I guess, because there's a couple of bits to it. But we're looking out for the floating boxes called Flotsam. And I've taken the liberty to fly around and collect some previously. I have a bit of chance. But we're looking for a Grave Digger, which I got one on the first box. Look out. But you also get a lot of pretty decent other supplies, lotuses, flowers, building materials, potions, dyes. They're definitely worth collecting if you see the scraps, they're in a later tip. Now you've got your grave digger. It can be broken or in your inventory, it doesn't matter for touching these graves. We're not really looking at anything else here. And there should be the chance of these death marker looking things with skulls and sticks on them. We got some spanking new hard and steel daggers. You can also get some heavy encumbrance gear and there's usually one here, hasn't spawned back, and here. And also a random language box. There's a fair few spots that have those graves. There's a few that I like to go to regularly. This one only has two in it right now. But it can have like a fair few, like lining all here. And these Stygian boats generally have Flotsam around them as well. There's a few places to find the Flotsam. Yes. If you come down to this location near Nekateri's throne, there should be a little grave marker in this nook. And it's either going to be dream dust that makes you see at night or a random bit of azura armor or a bindings of the dead apparently i didn't actually know that was an option i've never gotten that before that's kind of dope but on that note now you've got your bindings of the dead we want to come around to another place called the nook now this may or may not be here right now so i might have to come back Perfect. And there should be a grave here that has a 100% chance of dropping a Seth truncheon. And also collect these little figurines as you see them, because that's part of another tip. The boxes down here around in the Stygian area and the accused area are also very good. They're much like the Sepumaru boxes and the Mounds of the Dead and New Asgard boxes. And you'll occasionally find these one skulls. And they also have a 100% chance of dropping a random bit of their Stygian, Stygian Invader armor, plus sometimes a fragment of power. This guy did not drop one that time. We go back to Nekarati's throne. There's another one skull over here that's pretty easy to kill, but um, all of these guys attack you regularly. I'm in god mode and I'm cloaked, so don't just run in here willy-nilly, it's not actually like Set City. This is actually nonsense, forcing me to lock on stupid so short sword. But if you can manage to lure them away. When running around these areas, it's also good to keep an eye out for these tablets. Clicking on them will give you a buff equivalent to a potion. So if you've already had a potion, it will overwrite that potion now. It used to just stack. Got Jailers. And you want to kill them and collect their keys. Just loot all from there. Go back to fly mode. And every now and then you'll find, usually next to the actual trailer, but in this instance it's a bit down the hill, You'll find cages. Unlock the cage and you'll get yourself a fairly crap thrall. Whoa. She might exile one is actually like got a bunch more health than I thought. 
Oh no, never mind. I have an authority build that alarmed me for a second. I thought it was actually a decent thrall. Okay, yeah, no, it's still a fairly yeah thrall, but as far as thralls go these days, like, and it's free, no tame time. He'll help you knock something out better. Uh, he's gonna die for sure. But with your grave digger in hand, you might also come across these type of graves. This one in particular, right here, gives a piece of Lemurian armor or a weapon of some sort. Right here, we've found a stone sword. That's awfully helpful. Not really. But you want to keep a lookout for weapons leaning up against boxes like this as well. And we just found a Lemurian pike, which is much better than the stone sword. There's another great spot to come that's a little bit easier than there, actually, because you can just jump up the cliff here. Sometimes there's one poking out of this as well. Touch them, they give you a scouts report. You can sell them for gold at the pirate village. You get a steel trident. So if you see something like a weapon rack or a weapon leaning against a box, you're more than most likely able to touch them. This is another fairly decent place to come. Now regularly, again, all of these thralls will attack you. So you either got to come slightly prepared already to come to the accused areas or be a little prepared for a fight or a run. This spot particularly is pretty consistent at having this axe. That's not going to help at all. And you get the Axe of the Adventurer, which is a two-handed axe that does 50 damage. Again, pretty decent starting weapon. And you could run through there and grab that and run away before any of these guys probably knew what was happening. At the Accursed Citadel, you will find a similar grave to the one at the Little Lemuria Pirate Camp. That gives Azura armor and other chances of legendary weapons. Like, I got a Jadvadai's Great Saber out of there before. And they are accused people guarding it, so they will, like, probably wreck your life if you're not ready. But you can climb just up the side with some skill, run in and run away. And we'll be back here a little bit later. Places like Nekuti's Throne and all the different Stygian raided places and the different accursed places. These boxes have a high chance of dropping all the question mark essences that you need for the searches. So going in as a survival game involves farming and sometimes we want to farm as efficiently as possible, well all the time. So I highly advise coming to the Vault of the Gremlins before you do any serious farming and especially for one of our tips that's coming up in just a minute. Let's go through this dungeon. You can kill the gremlins in here and collect stuff that you can put in the fluid press, the squeezer, or Ica, which is pretty handy as well. I got an even better Ica trick in a minute too. I think I have to press that one. Now you gotta kill this big guy. It's pretty easy when you're not even in god mode, so don't worry too much. They all seem to drop abyssal flesh as well, which is cool for um, healy snacks. A little bit of demon blood. Get a sip to story there. And the gremlin sigil, which I've already taken one, sir. So with these boxes and the vaults will also have tablets to touch that teach you recipes that are really decent so i highly advise touching those as well in all of the vaults it's a great incentive to do them now you have your gremlin sigil bring some heart and steel to a lay shrine i choose this lay shrine apparently that was a daily quest 
put some hardened steel in there and these all summon different surges and you can summon really easy surges for some quick easy hide harvesting thrall taming not that many good ones spawn in the shitty purges surges but it's an excellent way to harvest zeal especially with the gremlin sigil equip so for time's sake we're going to do the altar of the south and hope that it's Defari because i can't actually remember what all of them are the altar of the north is a good one to do as well because they drop dragon powder and other cool shit. And you wait for your surge to go around, click the bits that it dropped, <laughs> we're fully loaded. If you've put essence in it will take longer and it will continue going up to indicate the level. Click the start surge button and the sky explodes. Now, it, this is very similar to a purge where you don't have to kill them, you can knock them out and it counts the same. So if you want to take your time with it, you can just knock them all out and then kill them afterwards. But be prepared for some of them to start waking up. Wait for everyone to fall from the sky. This is Defari, they're super easy. I'm going to go out of cloak mode just so they'll aggro to me. When I'm harvesting zeal, I like to try and get them as much in a pile as I can. These two are archers. Rude. We get a god tool of choice. I'm using a zeth knife. You see down the bottom there where I just got three? Now that works with pretty much everything that you're going to harvest. You have a chance of getting three times the amount. So I'm going to pause the recording and just run around and do this to save time and I'll be back with how much I actually acquired. Now mind you, the surge won't end until you complete it by killing the end boss thing, which this time was a cannibal brute. It was nothing too serious, but the heart of the purge, the heart of the end boss. And you can leave for like a while and even unofficial, it won't end until someone else comes and does it. As far as I know, I am also no surge expert by any means. But we got like a lot of these bearer crates which was quite nice there was a lot of bearers in that defari purge so if you like farming bearers that's probably a pretty decent one to go with and we got 161 zeal in just one search which took me maybe 20 minutes max and i was just kind of like pottering along if i brought a thrall or friends it would have been much quicker and had better points i've got points in for thrall Taking, but I don't have a thrall. But anyway, I digress. If you want zeal for like, say, a god bubble or any other type of thing like that, definitely come and do a surge on Zipcar. If you've been out mining, you may have come across the silver nodes at the vaults. Did I just say silver? I meant to say gold. But anyway, um, and you'll also see these little ones on the ground. You can pick them up by hand, which with four times now isn't too bad. But you're also able to hit them with pick, which gives a much better return. Now mind you, doing this on a hill is a lot easier than regular, but you can also do like a little crouchy bam thing like that. And these crystals are the same. So you can also hit them with pick. I think I know why I said silver, because that looked so silver. My brain just like read that. Yeah, that's all meant to be gold. That's so weird. There is silver here as well, though, but you got to go like... And lots of brimstone as always around vaults. That's actual silver. <laughs> and again, we're just here. And there's um, other vaults, like I'm pretty sure the Bat Demon one has some around it as well from memory. With all your newly acquired gold, go smelt that down, turn it into some gold coins, and make your way over to the Tower Watch Keep. Climb all the way up another tower. Uh, these guys bite you, so... Well, not these guys, that's merchant, but like, these guys. So be warned. Come over to Mia the Corruptible and purchase yourself some tamed Yaki Thakopal. So this is the Yaki base stats. <laughs> level zero pretty decent a thousand gold is very easy to get so if you like to have followers and you've got your authority build on he's already like going all right beat him up full of your regular things and you get yourself a little army 
So as you can see, we actually would have been able to buy far more than before if I'd smelted my gold before going there. And that's just from regular harvest on official raids. Also a great source of alchemy base if you've gotten unlucky with your bearer threes and fours. So apparently I've gotten a little bit, but you need it for so much now. While you've been looting Flood Sam and looting other boxes around the place, you've probably been killing one skull people. Probably found a few scraps, and they're not to be confused with the armor scraps from the Godbreaker dungeon. In fact, you put them in the forge to get a nice return on your Altharium. Now this furnace, he burns quick, but I do have the times turned up for the sake of this video. Now in your adventures around, you've probably also come across the figurines. Now they're not just a fancy decoration, you in fact can bring them to the pool of the grey ones. If you're struggling to get Hikar, look out for the ghoul figurines. They're pretty easy to do, although I advise probably coming with like backup and all weapons because the grey ones themselves if they touch you aren't great. They're very squishy though. So what we're looking for specifically is the ghoulish humor, but they also drop demon blood, the these guys don't drop a huge amount compared to some of the others. Some of them can drop a lot, but it, they're much like the Malstorm creatures. They drop fragments of power and various different poisoned weapons, which are really nice early game as well. And you want to hack them up and get your question mark essence as well. That guy didn't really have anything. Get some more pike. So they're not the most amazing weapons because they're not crafted with a thrall, but they're definitely a decent start and they're a nice thing to put on your thrall, especially because they're um, poison and stuff. I also like to do the Chocho figurines because they drop followers as well and you look out for the veterans because they have a lot more stat points than the regular ones. They're pretty easy to get. And the Giant King. He's just like the Giant Kings from the Godbreaker dungeon. It's actually last time I did it where I got my Yogg's touch. So they're a great source of demon blood as well as the chance to get those weapons from the Godbreaker dungeon. And there's a couple of other really good ones and they all have like nice little perks to them so experiment with them and find out which ones you like to grind the most. And again keep your eye out for the schematic fragments and we got a Nordus which is nice, a repair kit and some prowls which on this map aren't that great because the vault weapons. And as always, hack him up for demon blood. There are a couple of other statues that drop cool stuff like the corrupted liver, which will also go in the fluid press. We'll put the ghoulish humor in there for now. This corrupted liver, and that turns regular blood into demon blood at a fairly bloody decent rate. So if you are weirdly struggling to get demon blood on Sipta, and I think some of the events on Exiled Lands now have that as well, but with the ghoulish humor, we're then able to put bones and horns and things like that in here and it will slowly convert it to Ico. And you can put this as the loot from the dungeon that they drop when you hack them up. It also turns to Den Ico, I think, per one. If you really want it to go quite a lot quicker because I have rates turned up right now, you'd want to split this out between multiple fluid presses. For anyone who didn't know, a large campfire can actually hold a fair bit on it which is nice. You can fit a whole kitchen basically and I haven't even done this well. Yeah, weird little stacky trick. Same with the cauldrons. I use these ones for steel fry because they're quicker. Same price, way slower. Use this one for this. While I'm here at my random base, for anyone also who didn't know, rolls can have healing potions on them for when they take damage, but they can also take these books. This is one of the books from the Godbreaker dungeon like that. They can have other random stuff that affects their stats as well. Have anything else on me? We give them a potion of endowment, give them an elixir of enduring. Now you can only have like a book or a potion and a food, like the books and the potions, like they don't stack with each other, but the foods and stuff stack with the potions. So you can get your thrall kind of a bit chunky. The thrall won't eat the potions by itself. You do have to open up its inventory and feed it to them, but it's fully healed right now. Keep your eye out for the Void Forge Gladius when you go and hand in your relic shards at the tower for recipes. It is a very nice weapon, even without a thrall. This 73 damage comes with poison as well. It is a short sword, so you can attack people while they're swimming. Also nice. 
does the pokey pokey mate move but crafted with a thrall and with master kit i have 95 with 30 armor ben pretty decent for what that costs different vault weapons do different stuff as well which are really nice like for example these in Carmine do extra bleed so you could have a warhammer that does bleed and sunder there's other ones that are really cool too like the feroxic stuff that does poison as well there's a lot of variety as well as the armor so definitely go and check out the vaults and um have a play around with those see what you like like these gloves or the boots which give me all the carrot capacity when i'm not in good mode if you find these tips helpful at all please do like and subscribe it means a lot as i am a new channel i highly appreciate the support and feel free to put up a comment of anything else you would like to see in these videos and like i said at the beginning it is by no means a comprehensive list there's a lot more out there to find and discover and i will be doing other lists at other points as well but yeah i do hope you learned a few things from this and last but not least we have one of our final tips because if you're leveling sorcery you'll find you'll need a lot of skulls if you're struggling to find skulls and you haven't watched my let's play series link up above by the way do check it out grab your zathite ritual dagger hopefully you still got your gremlin sigil on it's good to farm a few and go stab some spiders they'll drop zath bags we're getting a lot more because of the gremlin sigil and open them up for Ica and bone and skulls and random dead animals which is helpful kind of if you're playing aoc and you want to level blood magic and find a dead horse or you don't want to wait for a dead horse for any reason but yeah from just those six we got 300 skulls super easy skull farm just use this ah, knife and just quickly one last little bonus tip especially if you play on pvp this is kind of handy if you come to this spot above this gray one's temple there's a pillar that you can actually build on and uh, you can't actually build on any of these ones. So apart from Nurgle, the little flying bat guy that people can zip up there with, which I kind of have a bonus tip on that too. I've been experimenting with anti-Nurgle designs and I've been messing around with slope roofs and palisades because these do a lot of damage when you land on them. You can fit a lot on the slope roof and it also enables for a little bit of extra layering. Let me get rid of that. Do with this knowledge as you will. I hope you all improve upon it as this is just a rough little sketch I did earlier and probably would not be the wildly easiest thing to build with the hanging out lip. This was just random. I don't know if I'd keep that. But like this type of lip. The spikies. Yeah. I don't know. I was messing around and I came up with this for Nurgle. So a little bonus tip if you've made it all the way to the end. I really hope some people learned something from this video. They were fairly basic tips and probably fairly well known as well. But if you happen to be new to the game, nothing is that well known. So I hope I helped some people out there. If you did like the content, like I said before, a like and a subscribe would mean a bunch. Highly appreciate it. I hope to see you all soon on my Let's Play series. But until then, I hope you have a great day, evening, morning, night, whatever it may be, wherever you may be.